we come to worship, knowing that God wants us to live up to his high standards. May we learn to live as he asks, treating everyone as Jesus would. Let us pray. Lord, help us to see others as you see them, to pay attention to how we act, not to what others do. Keep us always focused on you, Lord, so that we cannot turn from you, because you are all around us. Amen. Hello and welcome to our online worship for the Rosendale team. My name is Derek and it's great to have you with us for this act of worship. Whether you're joining us live um, on YouTube or whether you're watching later on, whether you're joining us from one of the churches in the Rosendale team or whether you're joining us from further afield, you're very welcome. Today we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 6 and later Laura will be bringing God's word to us and um, in that passage we see Jesus giving us some advice about not worrying, not being anxious about things. Uh, and that's easier said than done, isn't it? If you're anything like me, then, then you do worry about things. But um, as we explore that passage, hopefully the words of Jesus will encourage us and give us um, something to think about uh, in the times when we are uh, faced with worries and anxieties. We have a few notices now, just a couple of things that are coming up over the uh, period of Lent. And so we'll have those two notices and then we're going to have our first hymn in Heavenly Love Abiding. God Loves Rosendale. On Tuesday uh, the 21st of February at 7 o'clock, uh, Christians from across Rosendale will be meeting online for worship and to pray for our communities. God Loves Rosendale started last year um, with uh, various meetings in person, uh, but this time we're going to be meeting online. Um, so if you're interested in joining, then if you email Janet O'Neill, janet.oneill at rosendalecv.church, or ask your church leader, um, they will be able to pass on the Zoom link for you. Um, so that's Tuesday, the 21st of February, 7 o'clock on Zoom. Do join us for God Loves Rosendale. Ash Wednesday is just around the corner and so um, we're going to be having a Lent course, Dust and Glory. Um, this is a course that's available to anyone in the team, so if, if you've not got a Lent course in your own church or if you can't make your own Lent course, then you're more than welcome to join either of these two sessions um, that are on the screen there. The, the, the course itself, um, Dust and Glory, is a Lenten journey of faith, failure and forgiveness based on the Archbishop of Canterbury's recommended book for Lent this year, um, a book by Bishop Emma Ineson. It's called Failure, What Jesus Said About Sin, Mistakes and Messing Stuff Up. I'm sure we can all relate to that. So if you, if you want to join or if you're interested in joining, there are six sessions. It begins on Tuesday, the 28th of February. Both sessions are on a Tuesday. That's Tuesday, 28th of February. In the afternoon at two o'clock in person down at Central Church, Christ Church on Burnley Road in Bakeup. And then in the evening on Zoom at 7.30. And Laura is heading this up. Um, so if you need any more information or if you need the Zoom codes to join the Tuesday evening session, then do email Laura. Her email address is there, laura.brinnicum at rosendalecv.church. And she'd love to give you some more information. So, um, yeah, if you want to join us, then you're more than welcome to for our Dust and Glory Lent course, which begins on 28th of February.
And so we come now into a time in our worship where we can come before God and seek his forgiveness for our sins. Reconciling God. Forgive us when we make wrong choices, when our decisions are not of honesty and integrity. Reconciling God, we choose life. Forgive us when we hurt others by our words and actions. Reconciling God, we choose life. Forgive us when we judge others and think ourselves better. Reconciling God, we choose life. Forgive us when our relationships break down and we do not want to repair them. Reconciling God, we choose life. Forgive us when we don't strive for peace. Reconciling God, we choose life, life in all its fullness in you. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that in you we have new life. We choose life today through the cross. We are healed and restored. We are reconciled with one another in you. We thank you that we are forgiven and can again live in love and peace with all. Amen. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, nor about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you of not more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, and even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of them. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Do not worry. Do not worry. Really, God? Are you joking? Do not worry. Well, I woke up on Monday and the first thing I heard was that there'd been an earthquake in Turkey and Syria that had killed thousands of people. 
I woke up in the middle of a cost of living crisis and I don't know if I'll be able to pay my heating bills this month because it's February and it's freezing. We've got no ambulances or nurses or posts or teachers because half the country is on strike. I'm part of a church that looks like it's declining and everybody can't seem to stop arguing and it's always on the verge of splitting. And I think there's a damp patch forming on my ceiling and I'm pretty sure the car was making a funny noise this morning. And to top it all off, I'm not sure if I remember to lock the front door or switch the big light off when I left. So do not worry is not what I want to hear. <sighs> do not worry. I think this phrase from Matthew 6 is perhaps one of the most challenging verses in the Bible. I tend to get quite stroppy about it. When we react initially, we might feel as if Jesus is condemning us when we feel afraid or belittling our legitimate concerns or blaming us for an anxiety that we simply cannot help. But over Christmas and throughout Epiphany, we remembered the coming of Christ into the world. We heard about the difficult and often frightening events of his birth. In a few weeks during Lent, we'll travel with Jesus on a journey of great suffering, one that will see him face relentless temptation in the wilderness and eventually lead to Jerusalem and a walk of excruciating pain, humiliation and ultimately death. So we can be sure that Jesus, God with us, is well acquainted with suffering, with desperation, with need, with all the things that we worry about. How then does our passage fit in? First, rather than dismissing our worries, Jesus offers us a big, warm, cosy blanket of comfort. We're told there will be trouble. We have basic daily needs that must be met. Therefore, that process is always going to be something that takes up space inside our minds. Life in the first century, when Jesus was preaching these words, wasn't easy either. His listeners lived in poverty, disease, violence, injustice. Their world was as worrying as ours. But Jesus offers us two beautiful pictures the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. Maybe picture a bird or a lily for a moment. Try and see its detail. Jesus's description of the creatures and the flowers, they take us right back to the creation story in Genesis. And Jesus says to his listeners, are you not of more value than they, the animals and the plants? reminding us of God's particular care over our creation, the love and the trust that God showed us when he made us and placed the gift of the earth into our hands. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So Jesus advises us to think back to rest in the knowledge that God has held all the cares of creation since the beginning. He assures us that since before you or I breathed, we were known and we were loved. Jesus tells us our heavenly father, not a stranger, but our heavenly father knows all the things we need. He knows because he intricately wove every single one of us into existence right down to the tiniest detail. And our Father continues to love us, so he knows everything that is going on in our lives, even down to my fear of having left the big light on when I left this morning. And it's not just us. God has provided for and sustained every single created thing in every moment, and he still is right now. But you might be thinking, I like being reminded about God's love, but when I look around and within me, all I see is chaos. I see things to worry about everywhere. Everything seems to be broke or breaking. Nothing is quite right. I look at a newspaper, I look at the internet, it's all spiralling completely out of control and I am lost in it. 
But Jesus has something to remind us about here too. Earlier on in the creation story in Genesis, we're told that we have a God who eats chaos for breakfast. In fact, we have a God whose whole deal really is having the power to create order from chaos. You might remember the first words of the Bible describe the earth as a formless void and we're told darkness covered the face of the deep. In ancient Near East creation stories like Genesis, the deep often referred to a primeval watery mess. It had no form, no shape, no limit, just an unstable, endless, deep, dark chaos. And most of these creation stories are very lively. They're very violent. They usually involve lots of different gods battling it out and sometimes competing with giant sea monsters to win control of the deep so that they can stake their authority and try to work something out of all of this chaos. But in Genesis, you might remember, we have no battle between God or anyone else. There's no big contest. We're simply told God spoke and it was so. It's a wonderfully harmonious, peaceful picture. And God goes on to split everything up into separate parts and put boundaries in. We're told God separated the light from the darkness. He separated the waters above from the waters below. He gathered together the land and separated it off from the sea. And this process of shapes being formed and limits being put in place is all to demonstrate God's complete power over the deep. He can bring order. He's 100% in charge. And this power is displayed again after the fall, even after Adam and Eve bring sin and brokenness into creation. God sets about reordering. He promises to redeem creation, to make it new, to bring all things back into relationship with him, back into the correct arrangement with its loving creator. This relationship, this reordering, is made possible through Jesus, whose death and resurrection usher in that new creation, usher in what Matthew calls the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom, all things are perfectly, precisely, beautifully arranged. There's a feeling of rightness all the time and peace reigns because everything will be exactly as it was created to be. Jesus reminds us of the power of our creator who feeds the birds and clothes the lilies to comfort us, to remind us we do not have a God of chaos. Our God is the conqueror of chaos. Right now, the world may be broken. We may sense the chaos encroaching in, the wrong, the out of place, the confusing, the shocking. We may hear ourselves groaning along with creation for relief, but we need not worry. We need not be afraid of the mess. God has been pushing back chaos since the beginning. He has been pulling light from darkness. He has been ordering and arranging and rearranging so that we might have a new beginning. So a new creation would be born. If you're like me, if you struggle with worry, if you find your peace disturbed, Jesus's words stand to remind us of the love, the mercy, but most importantly, the power of God. I listened to a song on the radio a few weeks ago and I thought this lyric was helpful for when we get lost in our worries. The singer sang, God, the things that I'm afraid of are afraid of you. God, the things that I'm afraid of are afraid of you. Finally, Jesus lets his disciples know that because God is so powerful, they don't need to get too caught up in the problems of day-to-day -day needs. The world may be broken, but God isn't. He is in perfect working order. He has never dropped the ball, never reached capacity, never toppled over like human systems often do, and his plan is still unfolding right now. And this is where Jesus suggests the disciples should set their minds. 
we're told nothing, clothes, food, water, whatever, will be as important or as amazing as the kingdom that is coming. We're told the life of the kingdom is more, more in every single way, life in all its fullness, right, perfect and eternal life. When we worry, it can be easy to forget that we're preparing for the new creation. We don't always think to look for where it is breaking in right now, for where God is cracking things open, bursting out, rearranging, reordering. We fix our eyes on other things and we don't see God moving, creating, building and shaping amid the wreckage. But Jesus insists seeking his kingdom can help us when we get overwhelmed by worry. Jesus' advice in the last few lines of our reading is in the present tense. And he seems to advise us to do two things each day, here and now. Strive first for the kingdom of God. Not in an effort to ignore our needs, but in trust that God, the conqueror of chaos, will meet them. Because God knows us and can provide for us, we're free to give our attention to the kingdom to look out for God's new arrangements, to be attentive to new marks of love and justice and peace and put our energy into pursuing these things. And finally, we've circled round to those frustrating words again. Jesus says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Jesus often called the disciples people of little faith particularly when they misunderstood his teaching, when they became fearful at sea, when they couldn't heal even though he had given them the authority. They found learning to trust God hard. They found keeping their eyes fixed on his kingdom hard. Their journey of faith, like ours, was at times very chaotic. But no matter how messy it got, no matter how many worries crowded in, God was with them every single day, working to bring order, working to stretch, to reshape, to break, to replace stone hearts with hearts of flesh. And that's all God ever asks of us, to walk each day with him, to look for his kingdom now, and to let the conqueror of chaos take care of the rest. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning when I rise In the morning when I rise In the morning when I Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, just give me Jesus. Jesus, 
Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. Just give me Jesus. When I to die Oh, when I come to die Oh, when I come to die Give me Jesus Give me Jesus Jesus, you can have all this world. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Let us pray. Holy God, sometimes our lives are so full of worries that we forget how you look after us through every aspect of our lives. When our worries begin to spiral out of control, help us to turn them into a conversation with you, confident that you will calm our anxiety and give us hope for the future. Gracious God, we pray for your church, our Diocese of Manchester, the Berry and Rosendale Deanery, our own Rosendale Mission Community, and all the churches in our local communities, asking that there will be a growing desire to get together. We give you thanks for those who come up with fresh ways of making your name known to the wider community. We give thanks for General Synod, which met this last week, and for all those who work so hard to make important and sometimes difficult decisions regarding the everyday running of the Church of England. Creator God, we thank you for our world and the places where we live. Help us all to be mindful that we are all created equal in your sight, and accept our deep regret that despite this there is still so much inequality to be found. Help us to remember that you want us to be good stewards of your creation, living responsibly in the lands and seas of the earth. May all future growth be sustainable, and may we ensure that its abundance is fairly shared for the good of all. We pray for the people of Turkey and Syria, following the devastating earthquakes there this past week. May emergency aid and relief be forthcoming as quickly as possible. And our prayers are especially offered today for all who have lost loved ones, homes and possessions. May they somehow find comfort and assurance in these difficult circumstances. Father God, we thank you for the joy of human love and for all those among whom we live and work. We pray particularly for loved ones who worry us with their health or circumstances or life direction. We pray for those among our friends and families who do not know you or whose faith has been shaken. 
And loving God, we pray for all who bear the burdens of pain, bereavement, worry and depression. We pray for those whose illness stems from anxiety. We pray that they may have an awareness of your presence and an understanding that you are bearing those burdens with them and always working towards their healing and wholeness. Merciful God, through your love and mercy you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Comfort those who grieve in their sorrow and those who are worried about how they will cope on their own and reassure them that you will never leave them to carry the burdens of life unaided. Everlasting God, we ask you to lead us into the coming week. Help us to believe that you are close by us. Keep us from making mistakes and help us never to disappoint you through our words and actions. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. We gather those prayers together with the collect for the second Sunday before Lent. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for this online worship. I hope you've enjoyed your time with us. I hope you'll be able to join us again. And uh, our time together is drawing to a close now. So we're going to have our final hymn and then a blessing. And the final hymn is based um, on part of the passage that we heard this morning, Matthew 6, verse 33. Jesus says, doesn't he? But first seek the kingdom of God in his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So we're going to sing that hymn, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God.
May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes. The love of God be reflected in your hands. The wisdom of God be reflected in your words. And the knowledge of God flow from your heart that all might see and seeing believe. Amen. <laughs>